most of us eat every day, some of us too much, because yesterday's food is not enough to supply energy for today's needs. Why then do some of us expect yesterday's portion of heavenly manna, the Word of God, to keep us through today's challenges? On this program, we are going to change all of that. Let's experience God's words today and receive the power we need to live healthy, vibrant lives. Welcome to your daily portion with your host, author, speaker, L. David Harris. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Sunday, December 18, 2022. Hello, my name is L. David Harris. I am your host, and this is your daily portion where we give you God's word every single day. And today is no exception. We are continuing in our lesson study series on death, dying, and the future hope. We are focused on the future hope part. Our caption for today is the final judgment. The final judgment. I hope you are doing well, and it's a blessing for us to be alive and even awake. It's Sunday morning. Like, who's awake at this time except people who are being led in this moment to hear a word from God's word and that we need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. I hope you're okay, and you will click that share button. Click the share button so we can spread the gospel of Jesus Christ together. And by God's grace, we can hasten the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll get underway. Father in heaven, thank you for giving us this new day and the privilege that we have to open your word. I ask you now to give us your perspective on holiness, your perspective on judgment, your perspective on the appearing of Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that you will give us the fullness of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen again. The final judgment. Now, yesterday, we did talk to you about having more than one outcome uh, in, in terms of judgment, right? So we're not going to invest as much time on that today. We're going to go right in, right in to the scriptures in the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 25, the book of Matthew, chapter 25, and we will begin reading. Let's see where we should begin. Let's begin at verse 31. So let me ask you a question. So based on this passage, if you've already read it, you can start typing it in the chat now. But if you're waiting, what was the standard of judgment? What was the standard of judgment in this passage, right? Uh, based upon what are people being judged in this passage? Okay, so we're going to verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, we're looking forward to that day, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand. Listen very carefully to what he's going to say to those on his right hand. Let's see. It says here, uh, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goat on his left, and shall set, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom pre prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Have you ever heard that phrase from the foundation of the world? I think the Bible says that Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So this is all about salvation. The context is about salvation. Also, it says here, come ye blessed of my father. Have you ever heard that concept of blessing? And I'm sure all throughout scriptures, we have that principle. But I want to focus in on Daniel. There were a couple of times that Daniel was in distress. The prophet Daniel was in distress. And one in particular was in Daniel chapter 10. I won't go into the long story from there. But as he is fasting, he is praying, he is needing wisdom and encouragement. The Bible says that once Gabriel shows up, that messenger, that angel from heaven shows up, he tells him a story about how the prayer was already answered, but he was hindered by the enemy. And then Jesus Christ released Gabriel to come and deliver the message that was already prepared for him 21 days before. And he said in the beginning of that discussion, you are blessed, you are favored 
in heaven. See, he came with the message of hope. Don't be afraid. Their your prayer is answered. I'm coming here to give you skill and wisdom and everything else you need. But God wants me to tell you that you are blessed and you are favored. You are favored in heaven. You are beloved in heaven. Okay. So now we understand it's about God's people, salvation and God's people. Okay. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger and ye took me in naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer and say, Lord, when saw we thee hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king answered and say, and the king shall answer and say unto them, uh, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Oh my! So the Bible is telling us that God's people are not even as much aware. God's people are not writing it down in a ledger or in reports to say, these were my good deeds for the day. God's people are not self-aware in this context. When we are doing God's work, we're not writing down brownie points. We're not giving ourselves stars in our little children's ledgers to say, look at how many uh, food items I would have given out, how many items related to money that I've given out. Uh, I think who know, know what I am saying here. Let's continue. Then he said, then he said uh, to those on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed unto everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in naked, and ye clothed me not sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer something similar, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick? or in prison and did not minister unto thee, then he shall answer saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not unto one of the least of these, ye have not done it unto me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So we see two categories of people, two categories of people, uh, one category of people who have said yes to God, yes to that salvation plan that was there from before, there was a foundation on planet Earth. The ones who are now called blessed of our father, the ones who are called sheep in this discussion on the right hand, those who are uh, not really um, um, self-aware when we are doing what God says. Our focus is not self. Our focus is not walking on the water. Our focus is Jesus. You understand those individuals. And then the converse is also true. Those who have ultimately hated love, those who ultimately are self-aware and focused on self, those who ultimately couldn't care less really about what God's will is, except maybe intellectually, except maybe in as much as we can avoid certain punishments, you see? Uh, so God is saying to us that the standard, I didn't forget my question to you, of the judgment or the measure that determined the outcome in the judgment in this case was something very simple. It was something very simple. Those who receive salvation also keep the second and great commandment. The second and great commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. You see, only people who are holy can love our neighbors as ourselves. Only people who are holy can have love for God, the first and great commandment. And that is the foundation of all of it. So that when the second, which is like unto it, miraculously is kept, it is only because we are saved by grace through faith. So the standard here is the law of God. In this case, we see the context happens to be the second and great commandment. Have a wonderful day. Peace. Thanks for joining us, listening friends. Always remember, we cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. This has been your daily portion with L. David Harris. Make it a great day.